Oh, I got him. First fish in the boat with the crankbait, guys. Cousin just bought a new boat. We're going to test it out today. Probably doesn't float. <laughs> I hope it floats. We're going to see. Pay 200 bucks. $200 boat. Think you're going to be the one catching all the fish this time? I'm always the one that catches all the fish. What are you talking about? <laughs> He always outfishes me ever since we were kids. We used to go to fish camp together whenever we were like 12. This guy was the only one in the fish camp that would beat me. When I didn't, when he didn't go to fish camp, I would always win the fishing contest. Whenever he come to fish camp, he would beat me. The older cousin always wins. Uh, but today we're going to do some bass fishing. And I've been getting a lot of requests on uh, wanting to do how to bass fish. So bass fishing is a bunch of different variables depending on where you're at and what you're doing. So there's no just like one how to bass fish. So I was going to do like a how to bass fish with plastic worm video or how to bass fish with crankbait. But I'm just, I'm thinking too much. I'm just going to film and I'm going to fish and I'm just going to tell you guys what I'm doing. Let's catch the fish. <laughs> I hate you, Spencer. <laughs> That's not good. All right, guys. Well, I'm waiting on him to go get the stuff to fix the troll motor. I'm going to do a little bit of fishing. Now, you see this bank right here? You see there's sticks coming out in front of the bank, limbs that have fallen off. There's likely bass hanging out around that. Uh, bass like to hang out around any kind of structure. They hide in it, and they wait for bait fish, and they're prey to come, and then they ambush them. Also, stuff like this holds as you can see it's got green stuff coming off of it it holds like algae and types of plant well those little fish feed and minnows and stuff they feed on that plant and stuff like that so it also attracts bait fish which the bass eat so you see i'm throwing right out in front of where the sticks are coming out of the water now there's probably some sticks that still go past that some of the limb still goes on further and I just threw over it, and I'm going to work my worm over that. And I'm going to fill it in a minute. Whenever you fill the stick and you, you feel your worm hit it, you pull it off of it, you'll fill it on it, then you just pull it off, and then you let it drop. Count to about two seconds, and then give it a little jerk. Nothing picks it up, do it again. You just want to repeat that process and just bump the worm off the bottom. This pond is small enough for this lake. It's small enough that we're going to work the entire bank along the entire pond. But if you're fishing a really big lake, you want to get on Google Maps. If you don't know the area and you want to look for points and shoals, I'll make another video about how to search on Google Maps and find the good spots of the lake. But if you're fishing a small pond or a lake like this, you can just beat the entire bank. You start from one side and you work your way to the other. And you want to try to throw at what, you, what looks like good spots on the bank. Like you see where those sticks come out right there? throw at those so we're starting off fishing with worm because we're beating the bank but whenever we get to the open area and around the docks and start throwing the crankbait we'll get to the area where the bass are likely feeding at if you got any points or shoals anything that comes out like a dock for instance where the water's a little bit deeper you can throw a faster moving bait like a rattle trap or a crankbait all right guys i got a perfect opportunity right now to throw parallel with the bank so instead of casting at this spot of the bank, at that spot of the bank, I can just throw parallel at the bank and wear the whole bank. While he's up there baiting his pole, he set me up. Look at all those sticks in the water, dude. I can't believe there's not a bass hanging out around that. Well, it's crankbait time again. I got, I got to have, I got to loosen my drag. So, ooh, there was something right there. Look at that. Oh, that was a nice pass. Damn it, he got off. All right, guys, so you see there's a point right there. And you can see how the land comes down on the point. So that point comes out with a shoal under the water. So whenever you see points like that, you always want to target them. 
Now there might there might be some structure down there on it, there might not. The only way you're gonna know is if you fish it. But either way, the bass like to hang out on points and shoals like that. They like to school on top of them when they're feeding because the bait likes to hold up on the point. Now, that don't mean you're gonna catch something on it every time. That don't mean I'm fixing to catch a fish. But bass fishing is all about persistence. It's not like saltwater fishing. Bass fishing is throwing and throwing and targeting and finding the areas where it looks like a good spot where fish is gonna hold up and fish there. Sometimes you have to throw that spot five times before you finally get that bass to hit it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I fooled you guys. I didn't have a bite. Would've been cool if I did though. How's that song go? Would've been cool if you did. So there's a lot of different ways to fish with a crankbait. You can throw it out. The way I'm doing right now, is reeling it down until I feel the bottom. And once I feel it bump the bottom, I'm just stopping it, kind of jerking and reeling. So a lot of times when you, when you jerk it like that and you stop it, a lot of times that bass will grab it right once you stop the retrieve and that crankbait starts floating up. The easiest way to retrieve it is just throw it out and do a slow, steady retrieve with it bumping the bottom. What I like to do is just keep throwing it, working in different kind of ways until I figure out what the fish like and what water depth the fish are holding up at. The faster you retrieve it, the deeper it's gonna dive. You can throw it out and you can just jerk it, jerk it really slow and it won't go very deep. Now jerk and stop. Or you can just reel it really fast and drag the bottom with it. Uh-oh, he's got one. He's got one with a jockey worm. Boom. He got a little dink. He got a dink with a jockey worm. Pulling out drag, pulling out drag. Yeah, he's all right. He's a pound and a half, maybe two. Finally, first fish in a boat. He's a fat little sucker. Gave it a kiss. Dropped it in the water. Nobody's gonna cry about you mishandling kissing the fish. How dare you kiss that fish? You probably gave him mono. <laughs> Ah, I guess I'm gonna fish with a black plastic worm for a minute. So every single one of these docks, guys, have fish feeders set up on it. That means these fish feeders feed these fish once a day, sometimes twice a day. Well, what that means is there's bait fish, catfish, brim. They come. They know to come here to eat. So there's a bunch of bait fish that's gonna be hanging out in front of these docks. Well, the big fish, the bass, eat the bait fish. So that's why you always want to target docks whenever you see them, especially if they got a fish feeder on them. A lot of times too, these people with docks will drop structure off in front of the dock. They'll sink Christmas trees and stuff to create brush piles so they can fish. Because obviously the, the people fish, they got a fish feeder. Most of the time, people don't just feed the fish to make pets. Sometimes they do though. Sometimes they'll feed the fish and you catch their fish. I've had them getting really mad before about you catching their pets. Remember whenever we caught that carp? So me and him was at uh, Twin Lakes one time and we caught like a 50 pound carp off the dock and this lady come out screaming and hollering at us and crying about us catching her pet. That was her pet carp. And we let the fish go. The kids were shooting ass with BB guns. She's really anal about her carp. I'm gonna try a different method, guys. I'm gonna take this hook and I'm gonna put it in the worm, feed it all the way up in the worm. And then I'm gonna bring it out like this. Now I know 
that it looks really weird, but what this worm is gonna do in the water is spin and twirl around, which he is fishing with a jockey worm is what it looks like. And what that jockey worm does in the water, it's got a swivel on it. All it does is just spin around like that. It looks like a black and yellow caterpillar. Let's see if this thing, oh yeah, it's twirling nice and good. Look at it twirling in the water. The dock right here, the side of it. Sometimes the bass will be hanging out under the dock. They'll see it and they'll come out and grab it. But not this time. Like I said earlier guys, bass fishing is just a lot of persistence, a lot of casting, a lot of targeting different points to where you think there's going to be a bass at. And there's not always one there. Sometimes there is one there and he just don't want to bite. Most of the time there's a bass there, it's just getting him to bite. You can throw it a spot five times before he bites. Throw it at the same spot 15 times before he bites. I know I caught my first 10 pounder with a rattle trap. I threw in that same spot probably 20 times. Then I thought I hooked the bottom. I thought I hooked a big log and it just started taking off like a freight train. No, he ain't big. He's a dink. Dink. Catching the dinks today. Go ahead and get off of there for me. Smaller dink number two with the jockey worm. He's got two dinks so far with the jockey worm. I still ain't caught anything. I missed that big eight pounder earlier with the crankbait. So I'm gonna keep throwing the crankbait and I'm gonna catch me a giant. I'm gonna throw right at that dock right there. Right under it. Just let it hit the bottom, bump it off the bottom. All right guys, so now since we're up here around all this grass, I can't really fish a crankbait. But I'm gonna take this worm and I'm gonna try to skip it around that dock right here. Okay, I always like to have at least two poles rigged up. That way I can have one with something like a crankbait on it. Some of them will work fast and then one with a, a worm on it. Somebody gonna work slow. I got an eight. Huh? I got an eight. Yeah, well eight poles are definitely better. The more poles you have with different rigs on them that you can just pick up and throw are the better. Oh! Damn it screwing around and I had a bite. Whatever that was, it grabbed it pretty good. I was just reeling in. It makes me think I need to put my speed worm on here. All right guys, so I just had a bite with a black trick worm and I had it while I was reeling the black trick worm in. So what I'm gonna do is put on a speed worm, which is basically the same thing, except it's got a little tail on it. Let me show you guys. U-vibe tail. It's got a U-vibe tail on it. So check it out. This is the Magnum, of course, because everything I fish with, I fish with big. Go big or go home. So you see this is the regular black trick worm there. This is the black trick worm, what they call it, a speed worm. So it's got the tail on there, designed where you reel it really fast and that tail vibrates and creates some action. All right, throwing out the speed worm, guys. Oh, I got him. Oh, yeah. Oh. There he is. Oh, he's barely hooked, too. Chunker! <laughs> He's under five pounds. He's a dink. <laughs> All right. First fish in the boat with the crankbait, guys. Check him out. All right, guys. So what I was doing to catch that bass, I reeled the crankbait down until I felt it bumping the bottom, and then I just stopped reeling it. It floated up, and I started reeling it again. And as soon as I started reeling it, he whammed it. Guys, whenever you're fishing a bank, it's always best if you can throw parallel to the bank. So most of the time, if you're fishing out from a bank and you're making cast at the bank, you'll get the bite within the first five or 10 foot from the bank when you're working the worm. And a lot of people after, after the first five or 10 foot, they turn around and go ahead and reel it in. So it's always best if you can get up parallel to fish the bank. I think we're better off just cutting back and forth in front of the dock from there to over there. 
the area that we've caught fish at. Yeah, I mean, that's what me and dad used to do when we fished tournaments. We'd find the area we was catching fish at, and we'd just keep, keep hammering at that area over and over. Work it, go back and start it over. Go back and start over all day long until we, kept, until we quit catching fish on it. And we'd find something new. The hell? Oh! Oh, he nailed it. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to get out of here and go to work. It's part of bass fishing. You don't always catch fish. It's very challenging. Bass fishing can be very challenging, but it can also be very rewarding whenever you do catch fish. So that's part of it, and if you guys want to learn how to bass fish, there's something you're going to have to deal with is not catching fish. So that's why I'm going to leave it in this video. Well, it's not catching a lot of fish, but if you learned anything or if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do that and hit the bell icon that's next to the subscribe button so you'll get updated as soon as I upload a new video. We'll see you guys again soon.